Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. reporting for The Media Speaks. <clears throat> Make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. The beginning of the show starts with tragedy. It wasn't bad enough that I had to report on the death of Jeff Henneman from Slayer, but now... Yes, I'm leading with the story. Raymond Zarek dead at 74. Why would I lead with the story? Go and listen to my band's song called Bazooka Joe's Revenge. And when you hear my keyboard part, you'll see exactly why. Um, one of the most important musical icons in all of history. I like that the article here says, <clears throat> along with Jim, Ray and the Doors have churned out some of the most iconic rock songs in history. And that's very much true. Uh, died of bile duct cancer, and uh, I mentioned this, uh, who knows? Did he eat GMOs? Who has any idea? But I will say this, the music world has definitely lost uh, irreplaceable talent. Absolutely irreplaceable talent. So, rest in peace, Ray Manzarek. Uh, played up until the end, too, as, from, what I, from what I know. He's been playing and playing and playing. Never stopped. Alright guys, Infowars.com, Paul Joseph Watson, Adam Kokesh charged with assaulting a federal officer. This right here is mind-blowing. There are a million different ways that they could have stopped Adam Kokesh from doing the protest that they're going to be, for those of you that don't know, he's a commentator who is going to be carrying a, uh, a, him and his listeners and followers and people who follow and care about the Second Amendment, we're going to be marching on Washington, D.C. on a peaceful march with their rifles on the 4th of July. To stop him from doing this, and that's obviously what it is, he was speaking at a marijuana rights rally, and they arrested him. He had no drugs on him, nor did he smoke any drugs or do any drugs of any kind at this event. They said that he assaulted a federal officer, and yet there is footage taken from a million different cams that show that that was never the case. So if you're planning on going to the 4th of July rally, I would say go, because these charges aren't going to stick. And they know they're not going to stick. Uh, if you go to the Infowars.com article, you can see on the uh, thumbnail of the video cameras pointing at the officers arresting a very peaceful, non-threatening, non-fighting Adam Kokesh. So, um, these charges aren't going to stick. They are to intimidate a peaceful man from doing the good work that he does. Incarcerated political activist Adam Kokesh arrested by police for exercising his First Amendment rights during a pro-marijuana legalization protest on Saturday has been charged with assaulting a federal officer, despite the fact that the video of the incident shows him not resisting arrest. Kokish was kidnapped, it goes on, by Philadelphia police, I love the way that's worded, <clears throat> as he gave a keynote speech on Saturday. The former Marine was not smoking or in possession of any drugs when he was arrested. It can carry ten years, people. It says here, ten years in jail uh, would almost certainly uh, scooper Kogesh's plans of leading an armed march on Washington, D.C. in July if authorities were able to make it stick. So here's what we're doing. Supporters of Kokesh, and I am one of them, are encouraging people to politely but firmly demand for information on Kokesh's circumstances by calling the numbers below. Uh, U.S. Attorney in Philly, 215-861-8200. U.S. Magistrate, Philly, 215-597-6079. Philadelphia Federal Prison, 215-521-4000. Wait a second, then press zero. U.S. Federal Courthouse, Philly, 215-597-7704. And lastly, <clears throat> U.S. Park Police Office in the Chief D.C., 202-619-7350. And Philly 215-597-7077. I have done my job, my friends. I'm going to call. You call. Let's get him out of there. These are trumped up charges. This is ridiculous. This is what happens. And this is why we all need to stand together. Because if we stand together in numbers, they can't do things like this. Uh, 10 News. WTSP.com. 
Florida man, Florida quietly shortened the yellow light standards and length, resulting in more red light camera tickets for you. Before I do this story, I want to say that 10 News WTSP has one of the worst websites that I have ever been to. Hey, idiots! When people come to your website, a lot of times they don't want the damn video to play. And if it does, when you stop it, they don't want it to play again! That's a real good way to get people to not... You know what? As a matter of fact, you guys may never hear a story from 10 News again. I am that mad. Sick of this. Um, find 10 News investigator Noah Pransky on Facebook or follow his updates. Yeah, and tell him that his site's awful. Tampa Bay, Florida. A subtle but significant tweak to Florida's rules regarding traffic signals has allowed local cities and the counties to shorten yellow light intervals, resulting in millions of dollars in additional red light fines. The 10 News investigators discovered the Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, quietly changed the state's policy on yellow intervals in 11, reducing the minimum below federal recommendations. The rule change was followed by engineers both from FDOT and local municipalities collaborating to shorten the length of the yellow light at key intersections, specifically those with red light cameras, or uh, RLCs. Here's what's important, people. What I was saying before. If we all stick together, then this, this kind of baloney doesn't work anymore. It doesn't. If you get a ticket for speeding, don't pay it. And that's not going to work if I just do it. There needs to be, and I can't do everything myself. I've tried to do this. I need somebody with networking skills out the wazoo, I guess. But we need to get a site going that in each state pledges to not pay speeding tickets. Not pay them. You get a DUI, not going to court. And you're going to keep driving. And you know what that's going to make them do? They're going to go after the real drunk offenders, the ones that are really drunk. They're not going to go after the social drinkers who weren't breaking any law. I have a story on that coming up probably in a day or so. Same thing with these tickets. They manipulate the lights and they, you know, they've got the cameras and they stop paying it. Otherwise, you're going to get more and more stories like this over and over again, ad nauseum, without end. And I mentioned in the last posting, Florida is a state that's going in two directions at once. There are the libertarian uh, free thinkers down there that are doing wonderful things. And then there is the, uh, the, the guard down there, the Russian guard, uh, shortening yellow lights in the state and the union that arguably has the oldest population. So uh, go figure. Guys, Nitro slash Pack prepared to center ink. Have you been here? Media Speaks has probably gotten them on board, and wow, things there are much cheaper than you would think. Uh, the Life Straw, I've seen it for like 20 bucks. They're saying it's normally $24.99. They got it for $16.96. I haven't found that anywhere. If you have, you let me know. I sure as hell have not. Um, they got all kinds of things. I was looking at their Goal Zero Guide 10 Plus Adventure Kit Soul Charger. Usually 160, they got it for 120.85. Guys, go check it out. Best way to check it out is from the link at the Media Speaks. That's how they know that you found it from us. So go to the MediaSpeaks.com, click on Nitro Pack, have a look around. You guys are gonna love what you see. The last thing I want to get to is uh, look up Dana Mobley Christ. Uh, you can find her on Facebook, D A N E A Mobley Christ, or the Charity Connection. She runs the Charity Connection, and she now has lung cancer herself. So she's looking for help from all of us. She's helped a lot of people, guys. Let's step up the bat for her. This is RT. This is awful. Worse than AIDS, a sex superbug discovered in Japan called a disaster in waiting. I was in the uh, <clears throat> fifth grade. I was blowing up by the time I was in the seventh grade. I remember I used to stay up and my dad worked afternoons, so he'd be getting off around 1130 and in the summer before they rushed me off to bed. Um, I would stay up. And then, you know, I had the uh, same hours I do now. <laughs> it's like 4.21 in the morning. Um, same hours I do now then. <clears throat> Even as a kid, I just kind of 
gravitated to being more of an eight person. I remember when AIDS was just kicking off, um, everybody was, you know, freaking out about it. And I remember thinking that it was, you know, it was something that was going to be life changing even at that young age. Age. I just had realized, of course, uh, you know, kids on the playground, you fag, faggot. So, you know, I knew what a gay person was. Um, around that time, they believed that it was, uh, of course, you know, the gay plague or something, and it turned out to be uh, much worse. Not that that wasn't bad enough, it certainly was, but it became even much worse and became, you know, transmittable, obviously, to all of us. Well, this looks like kind of the same thing here, and I hope it's not. I, I hope to God on a stack of Bibles it's not. Doctors are warning that a drug-resistant strain of gonorrhea could be more deadly than AIDS and are urging members of U.S. Congress to spend $54 million on the development of a drug that would fight it. And that's another glowing one right there. Not a vaccine. In the vaccines, they know they don't really work. If they're really afraid of something, they try to find a drug that'll fight it. And uh, this is bad, I, especially when we're, you know, this close to really stopping AIDS from killing as it does, if not curing it outright, and then this. Now, this might be a lot worse than AIDS in the short run because the bacteria is more aggressive and will affect more people quickly. Alan Christensen, a doctor of naturopathic medicine, told CNBC, again, they're interviewing naturopaths, not regular doctors. Natural paths are people that wisely tell you to do things like take 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. And you should. And I do. Um, they're not just asking the garden variety doctors that they normally go to just to get a yes or no out of them. You know, whichever one they happen to want at the time. And they're going after real, uh, real natural paths here. The new strain of gonorrhea, HO41, was first discovered in 2009 after a sex worker fell victim to the superbug in Japan. Poor Japan. Medical officials reported that the medication-resistant sex superbug was discovered in Hawaii in May of 11, and has since spread to California and Norway, the International Business Times reports. I'm going to go on because this is important. Nearly 3 million people die from AIDS-related cases each year, and the HO41 superbug could have similar consequences, according to him. I'm going to go on, but I want to go on to some of the, uh, the other parts of this and say why it's so much worse. Getting gonorrhea from this strain might put someone into septic shock and death in a matter of days. So this is very dangerous. The gonorrhea strain has not yet claimed any lives, but the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have asked Congress to spend $54 million to find an antibiotic to treat the strain. It's very grim, especially considering, um, you know, at some point uh, the, the gonorrhea is going to build up a resistance to the antibiotic that they do discover, so they're going to have to find another avenue to this, which might be why they're asking natural paths. <coughs> In the Capitol here briefing last week, health officials said an education and public awareness campaign is crucial in minimizing the effectiveness of HO41. William Smith, executive director of the National Coalition of STD Directors, said that if the sex superbug spreads, it could quickly kill many people before a treatment is discovered. People, if it's not one thing, it's ten. My dad used to say that. It's very true. Um... Uh, let, let's hope this is like uh, SARS, uh, something that is greatly overhyped. The thing is, it, like for reasons I stated earlier, it doesn't seem like it's overhyped, not when they're calling natural paths and not when they're asking for drugs, not vaccines. And normally they'd say, you know, discovered a vaccine, uh, let us give you the mercury and you'll be fine. This looks like something real. Uh, U.S. news. Tiny device will protect do domestic drones. This is great. They will detect them, I can read today. Worried about drones spying on you? Well, soon a device might be able to send you text and email alerts to let you know when a drone is nearby. A Washington, D.C.-based engineer is working on the Drone Shield, a small Wi-Fi connected device that uses a microphone to detect a drone's acoustic signatures, sound frequency, and spectrum when it's within range. 
The company's founder, John Franklin, who has been working in aerospace engineering for seven years, says that he hopes to start selling the device sometime this year. He is using the Kickstarter-like Indiegogo to finance the project, so go to Indie, I-N-D-I-E, Gogo, G-O-G-O, -G -O, all one word, and help this guy. Uh, you can you donate some money to his project if you believe in it, and then his project comes to fruition. And this is something you should do. Listen how cheap he's going to want to move it for it to. The device will cost $69 and will be about the size of a USB thumb drive. It will use Raspberry Pi, a tiny $25 computer, and commercially available microphones to detect drones. He says he imagines that people will attach the drone shield to their fences or roofs to protect their home from surveillance. People will get an alert and know to close their blinds. What a hero! What a man! Go and support him. He's doing great work. The last thing that I want to get to, ABC Utah, gun carrying man ends stabbing spree at Salt Lake Grocery Store. And this is why we need to ban guns, because it's it's much better to have people stabbed to death than it has than it is to have the stab stabbing stop, I guess, from what the anti-gun lobby says. Here's the facts. Salt Lake City, a citizen with a gun, stopped a knife-wielding man as he began stabbing people Thursday evening at the downtown Salt Lake City Smith store. Police say that the suspect purchased a knife inside the store and then turned it into a weapon. But only guns can be weapon. Or we should ban knives. Go to my Bob Costas Was Right video for more on that. Smith's employee Dorothy Espinoza says he pulled it out and stood outside the Smith's in the foyer and he just started stabbing people and yelling, you killed my people, you killed my people. Espinoza says that the knife wielding man seriously injured two people. There was blood all over. One got stabbed in the stomach and got stabbed in the head and held his hands and got stabbed by the arms. Then, before the suspect could find another victim, a citizen with a gun stopped the madness. Did you hear that? The guy pulled a gun on him and told him to drop his weapon or he would shoot him. So he dropped his weapon and the people from Smith's grabbed him. By the time the officers arrived, the suspect had been subdued by employees and shoppers. Police had high praise <coughs> for, gun -carrying man, for the gun-carrying man, their typo who ended the hysteria. Lieutenant Brian Purvis said this was a volatile situation that could have gotten worse. We can only assume from what we saw that it could have gotten worse. He was definitely in the right place at the right time. Dozens of other shoppers, who too could have become victim, are also thankful to the man carrying the, the gun-carrying man. You can sound, who was that gun-carrying man anyway? The lone stranger! And many, like Dannyville Julian, are still in shock from the experience. Scary, actually, really scary. Five minutes before I walk out my car, it could have been me. I'm going to read the end of this, too. Police say that right now they have no idea what caused the suspect to go on a dangerous rampage. So far, police have not released the names of the suspect, the victims, or the man who pulled the gun. The gun-carrying man! Thank you, uh, Common Sense, for at least getting some press. You are listening to The Correct Views, Sam I.B. signing off. Good night, God bless. Please donate if you can, because every penny you give me goes towards a better show. Make sure you check out The Media Speaks at TheMediaSpeaks.com. Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself posting non-stop. Boom, boom, boom. So go check it out. See you, friends.